We spoke to Mickey Jr., um, one of the uh, journals that uh, you know are better known on the continent about um, Nabi, somebody that he's been in contact with for a very long time, just after that last match. And he had let us know that Fiston Mael is one of the players that Nabi would love to have at Kaiser Chiefs. I can tell you now, I did my research on that, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with the Fiston Mael, but this is a player that was bought in Egypt for pyramids. You know, they spent a million dollars to bring him through there. He's uh, a player that's on something like almost uh, 20 million a season. I, I don't, I don't, he's the leading goal scorer. I don't see that kind of money being spent by a South African team uh, on payments of salary to a player. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the kind of player that we're not going to be seeing here and not at Chiefs especially. If we see him, maybe he'll have to take a salary cut because... Why would you take a salary cut to come to South Africa when you're playing in Egypt? Uh, that's the thing. Maybe it's the story that's not just going to disappear in the, in the thin air. I mean, you'll ask yourself, if she, if he comes back, also he needs to come back from with a better uh, or improve, improved offer from there. Again, it's going to be very difficult. I think maybe Nabi, by wanting these expensive players, is also putting himself under pressure at a weight goal because he's going to... We might see another thing where he doesn't even last almost two seasons in the case of Chiefs if he's going to want to reinforce with like high-profile players because the team, the more they spend more money, then... Once the result doesn't come, it's a different story. So I don't know, because it's very clear now that Kaiser Jr. and the Kaiser Chiefs management, they're all out trying to impress the coach, support him with whatever he wants. Now we'll see the results in August. Right. We're going to stay on the continent for a little bit longer. One player that South Africans now were introduced to due to the Champions League, right, was Aziz Key. It was a player that people that watch continental football would have known. I had the opportunity to watch him live, and that's how I got to, to know of Aziz Key. Mm. I'm not sure what your guys' thoughts are on Aziz Key, but we've often wondered if there's been anybody that has asked or, or, or wanted an Aziz Key to come to South Africa, to come to the PSL. Well, we spoke to his teammate, uh, Matlats Makudibele, the former um, PSL Orlando Pirates player, um, Marumo Gallens player, who now plays with um, Aziz Key. Aziz Key, of course, is uh, uh, the shot taker behind that goal that we still wonder till today versus Sundowns. Was it a goal or was it not? Did it cross the line mm -hmm. or did it not cross the line? This is what he had to say. Have a listen to Matlatsi Makuribele on Aziz Key and saying that uh, there are inquiries from local teams. Yeah, well, look, after the game against Mabiri Sundowns, obviously, you know, he's, getting, he's been getting calls left, right and centre. And I had the privilege of sharing a room in camp the game after Mabiri Sundowns, a league match. I shared a room with him and we, we had a lot of conversation about football and everything, you know. He was just asking me my honest opinion about South African football and me having played for both teams that supposedly were in contact with him which is Orlando Pirates and Mamluri Sundowns. And I gave an honest opinion about the two teams. So he's asking a person that knows both teams, played for both of them at the youth level. Uh, Matlati played for Sundowns. Um, and of course, at a senior level, played for Orlando Pirates. Aziz was asking about these two teams, saying to him that these are the two teams that have come and inquired about me. Pro, what do you make of Aziz Key in the DSTV Premiership, firstly? And then secondly... What do you think of uh, him fitting in at a Pirates and a Sundowns? But before that, perhaps, let me play you what he had to say about what he thinks of the player. As he's, he's not uh, the best player in Tanzania by mistake. He's not the leading goal scorer in Tanzania by mistake, you know. And he's a phenomenon. Should he come to South Africa and be at the good team at the right time with a good coach, he will light up the DSTV Premiership. Pro, your thoughts? Uh, but Andy, uh, uh, I saw a bit of him um, at Afcon, and uh, I know that he's a high-profile player in Tanzania. And trust me, uh, whether he joins Sundowns or he joins the Orlando Pirates, I think uh, either team will benefit greatly for a player of his caliber and his quality. And uh, for me, I think um, the Pirates style of play would suit the player more than the, the Sundown style of play and then also looking at the competition for places as well. I think he stands a better chance of uh, showcasing his talented pirates than his Sundowns. But uh, I know sometimes it's, a, it's only a matter of who's got uh, more money than the other and who's promises more bonuses than the other. But at the end of the day, in the interest of football, I think he will be more suited for Orlando Pirates than for Mamelo the Sundown. I'm looking at your face. You're not convinced, are you? In what sense? As is key. No, no, no. It's not that. I think... Um, you have to go on even what uh, Makuri Bell, I, what, what, what interested me was the way he's even trying to be, you know, politically correct. And he said the supposed interest. Yeah. Um, and so 
Um, I, I think there's genuine interest. I think his, uh, his, his record speaks for itself, um, you know, his performances. And we look at that controversial moment alone. Um, you know, that's the performance in that match. He was, he is, uh, you know, not just hype. There is something. And I think it's great for South Africa that some of the top players on the continent want to come to South Africa. And I think that means, you know, our clubs are steadily on the rise. And I mm. think Sundowns have firmly placed us there. And I think the fact that uh, Orlando Pirates are pushing to also, you know, really restake their claim on the continent in terms of, of the club space, the continental club space, it, it speaks volumes that, you know, teams are now interested. We need a Kaiser Chiefs uh, to also attract big names. And yes, maybe, you know, the, the, the budget might be an issue, but... That's where South African clubs should be. We should be among the front runners when it comes to the top talent on the continent that are playing on the continent and not necessarily going to Europe or whatever the case may be. So I'm, I'm excited by the fact that Azizki is linked to coming to South Africa. Azizki, 28 years old, uh, the Bikinabi uh, boy from Burkina Faso, born in 1996, is an attacking midfielder um, for young Africans. He did come from pyramids before that. And if um, you go to transfer market, uh, you can tell the influence of this show because since we had that conversation, they've gone uh, on transfer market and listed Mamluri Sundowns and Orlando Pirates as possible interest in the boy. So it, it tells you how far we go and we appreciate it uh, that you do listen to the show. Nadim, Aziz Key. There's big talk on him. He's the best player in Tanzania. He's uh, 28 years old. At his peak as an attacking midfielder. Still got the pace. He's got that power shot that we saw. Uh, Bamboozle. Uh, Ronan Williams, who, of course, claims that as a save because he says he touched that ball. He is a very, he's a very good player. He's a, I remember when you were speaking about the president also of Yanga, he spoke highly of him. And we saw against Santos when he scored that goal, that was disallowed. But I, on a, I honestly feel that... Whoever, when he scored that goal, that was disallowed. Yeah, for me it was a goal, so th that's how I'm saying it was disallowed by the VAR people. But whoever, if Pirates can sign him, I will tell you now that the Pirates might win the league next season. He's that kind of a player who can immediately become a game changer when he joins because it's sometimes we don't know what's going on now, who's going to be the coach and all those kind of things. He can just make Pirates better because you look how Pirates were performing. If they can get that kind of a player who's that uh, prolific, who's uh, ready to go, and then you add the one that was signed last yeah, week. You get a feeling he doesn't need a season or two. To, no. to, to gel in exactly is that kind of a player and the environment of pirates now it's more conducive for players to just coming in and, and deliver the way the team they set up already is a winning culture that is being developed in the cups i know a lot of people are saying no winning cups it means nothing you have to win the league but again pirates have beaten the best team that was winning the league twice in a in cup, cup finals if he can join pirates he's that good for me i think he can be a game changer in deciding the league title mark yeah, I think you need those kind of players. Uh, players who are, like you say, are ready to go. Um, he's he's proven himself on the continent, proven himself in the Champions League. Um, it obviously takes an adjustment. South African football is different. Uh, local club football, um, the, the local league is different to like a Champions League or whatever the case may be. But I think it'll be an easy adjustment for him. Uh, it's not like it's harder. It's, you know, it's just the way we play in the league and your opposition you're playing against is very different. Um, but I think he, he'd be a ready-made uh, mm. you know, introduction. But as do you well. think he lights up the league? I think he'll definitely have a great impact in the league. Um, whether they automatically win the league next season because of Aziski, I think that might be a bit of a stretch. But I think what Nadim is also uh, alluding to is maybe the unsureness of what's happening at Sundowns at the moment. Maybe that'll play in their favor. But um, I definitely think he'll have a massive, massive impact. We're going to get into Sundowns. But, uh, We're going to leave that story but, for last. Um, yes, Pro? Uh, I was going to say, but Andy, that looking at the Champions League as well, I don't think yeah. Uka being a can vote in John Law who can help Paris um, move a step higher in the Champions League. But Azizki alone can take them to that level where they qualify for the group stages. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he knows that terrain. Um, and be ca coming from Burkina Faso, playing in Tanzania, having been to, he knows that terrain, he knows yeah. how to play a Champions League. And so, th th that's yes. the sort of experience that an Orlando Pirates would need more than a Sundowns. I, I think I, I think Pirates mustn't look them as a Champions League winning team because we know they lost to a team from Botswana. They still need to prove themselves if they can even reach the group stages of the Champions League. I, I think the, f the immediate focus for Pirates is the winning the league and taking over Sundowns because winning the Champions League is very, very difficult. There's, oh. a, there's a reason why only two teams have won it in South Africa on once. So there's a reason it's becoming to, to, it's being won by two teams in the last eight years, either of Al Al or Whitehead. So Paris for now the focus is winning the league. Champions League, we know they're not gonna win it next season. 
they are not good enough. The fact that they lost to a team from Botswana, they can't be suddenly become and go all the way and win it. No, I think you, you're right in saying they shouldn't be looking at winning, but improving them in the Champions League is a definite, I think. Yeah. I think he definitely comes in and um, they got become competitive and getting to the group phase is the next step. And so can Paris then get to the group phase? Can he help them do that? Definitely. A player that's played for Asik Mimosa, um, Afad Yenakua, Nia Salanis. But the important part here and the reason that I think you know, it would make better sense at, 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 at Pirates is because he was developed in Spain. That's where his development years took part at Rio um, uh, when he was playing for the under-19s there back in 2014, 2015. He spent his first two years, 2015, 2016 again, before he was without club in Spain. So Pirates with a Spanish coach, maybe something there. Maybe something there. I think the only question is... Is it a step back for him? Because From Tanzania to South Africa? It's definitely a step no, up. No, what I'm saying is, in terms of club, who is he playing for in Tanzania? For well, young Africans, a yeah. A team that's competing consistently and doing you know, relatively well in Champions League. If he wants to win the Champions League, that's the question he's asking himself. Who's closer to winning the, the Champions League between Pirates and young Africans? Young Africans. No, the question you have young to Africans ask is, who's are closer, closer to winning the Champions League no, between, yeah, between yeah, Pirates yeah, and Young Africans are much closer. That's what you have to ask. Because he's, if he's looking to make a move and he wants to win the Champions League, does he go to Pirates? Who told you that Sundowns is closer but between, to win the Champions between, League? No, 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 never mind then Sundowns. Pirates. Who's between to Pirates and Young Africans, who's closer to winning the, it's the, the Champions Africans, League? It's obviously. Young Africans, obviously. They've been there. They, I mean, they've literally got, what was it, quarterfinal stage? Quarter now. Anyways, so it's, they're close. It's not like his dream is to, to, win, I'm saying is, is to win the Cup Champions League. He wants to play for the biggest team. Pirates is bigger t team than Young Africans. So, but his course, choice is not between pirates and young Africans. We're talking no, about pirates. No, no, no. pirates. I, I think, I think, Kudandil, we need to correct something. Uh, Unadim is politically incorrect when he says pirates is bigger than younger. Pirates is bigger than younger in southern Africa, but pirates is not bigger than younger in east and middle uh, of Africa. So we, we, we need to. I don't know. I don't know how to politely tell you you are wrong. I don't know how no, to politely tell you but, pirates but, is a bigger. Uh, no, but let him finish. Let no, him finish. Let him tell you the point. Than, let him tell you the point okay? first. Yeah. yeah. The point, the point I'm making is that uh, both of us, we are agreeing that Ianga has got better opportunities of winning in Champions League than the Paris. And that is why I said initially, Pazuzki is there to help the Paris move a step higher in the Champions League and qualify for the group stages. A stage that they failed to qualify for last season. But to say Ipanit is bigger than Ianga in Africa, I think... For me, um, that, that's debatable. I don't think... No, it is not debatable. Let, 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 yeah, yeah. let me tell you why in some instance younger might be bigger than Orlando Pirates younger get better crowds at the stadium they fill up their stadium in every single game home and away that's a fact right younger in the last five to ten years have done better in the Champions League than what Orlando Pirates have done so those two facts if you're looking at it in that way but Nadim how to you is Orlando Pirates bigger than younger younger is never rich uh, the Champions League final they've never won it Pirates have won it so already by doing so, it, Pirates is a bigger team than them. And the Pirates have done well in the Champions League historically than yeah. mm. If you look at the participation and the, all those kind of things, in Africa, uh, across Africa, Pirates is a bigger team. It has played more matches in cup competition than younger. That's a fact. And one more, one more matches. So I, 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 I'm struggling to feel like all suddenly right. how you can say younger is a bigger team than Orlando Pirates. We're going to move on just from like this. Crazy. We're going to move on from this. We're going to go to the player <laughs> movement so that after that we can uh, focus maybe the last 20 minutes on the matters arising at Mamilodi Sundowns. You've been waiting for the opinions of the guys in the studio to wrap up this conversation. You know, we heard the conversation when he was here, Rulani Mukwena. We heard what the Sundowns team said in the statement. Rulani Mukwena did do an interview during the week, although not much came out of that. But you've pieced all of that together. And with the insights that we have as well, we're going to put to bed a lot of your thoughts on Sundowns and Rulani Mukwena. But also, Nadim said something about Rulani Mukwena um, a couple of months ago. And Sundowns parting ways. All of us in the studio looked at him and said, you are incorrect. Uh, go take your pills. You didn't take your medication. He's proven to be right. But what was that based on? We'll get into that. But firstly, let's get into some of the movements that we've seen. Uh, let's start with uh, Andy Lejali moving to Chiba United. Bang <laughs> Yeah, I thought I was avoiding this question because 
for me, Andy Lechal used to be a, w- w- my favorite player when he was at Orlando Pirates, Sundowns, even when he played Ostend in, in Belgium. But now I think he's more of a motor biking than a soccer player. So it's a very strange move, and it's a strange move by Chippa United because they released so many players to sign Andy Lechal. We saw what he can do at Swallows, which was nothing. I don't believe he's the same player that he was. I don't think football is so important. He did say in one of the radio stations that he didn't want to join any team between January and now. So now you want to go to join Chippa United. I don't know if it's going to improve Chippa United. It's just like maybe Chippa and Bengals doesn't learn in terms of signing players. Because with that kind of signing, signing Charlie, he was going to sign at least three quality players who are going to improve the team. Andy Richard is not going to improve Chippa United. I spoke to three players at Swallows um, and they said, even in not the best physical condition, Andy Lejali was still the best player in that team. This is now last season. They were saying, they were looking at Andy Lejali and saying, wow, what a player. Pro? Well, uh, but Andy Le, without a doubt, talent wise, uh, if Andy, Le, Andy Le, I, I played against him in 2005. So ah, you can imagine against him. Ha! <laughs> I, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm telling you the honest living truth. He was playing for him as a TLA professional. Um, back in the days. But, uh, uh, how, 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 how old? How, it means Andy Le- when you played against him. Uh-huh, I'm not not no, 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 because he was playing against uh, some good man. But, um, no, I'm telling you, in that, that, age, that, in that age was 14 years. Please switch off his mic. Pro, finish your, your thoughts. I can tell you now, Ichipa United, I think um, they are looking at uh, someone that can help them improve their team. Uh, they've lost to Goodman Moselle, obviously. He's gone back to Pirates. And uh, they've lost to Orozco Peterson. They've terminated his contract. So they will need someone uh, of Andy Lezmatis within that midfield area who's going to help them, especially in, in, in grooming the young stars as well. So for me, I think it's a good signing for them. Um, whether he can be there for the whole season and assist them. And it's also closer to Matatier as well. So I don't think it's going to have a lot of problem of traveling up and down and going to visit home and all those kind of things. I think it's a good signing for Chipa. And let's hope that uh, he can stay injury-free and help them throughout the season. Mark? Yeah, it, it, again, uh, it, his pedigree is there. We know what he's done in the game. Mm. But of late, yes, uh, you know, he hasn't really shown to be at his best. And what he offers the team as a whole, is he now being bought for his experience to guide the youngsters as process? But is he really going to contribute on the field? How much is he going to give them on the field? Um, and then, you know, when Nadim speaks about uh, his interest at the moment, how motivated is he? Mm. When you look at his physical structure right now, you know, there's a lot of doubts in that. Like, how professional is he in that regard? Um, can you get a full 90 minutes out mm. of him? So now you have to manage, you know, a player. Um, how does he fit into the squad? It's, gonna, it's, it's a risky, let me just say, that's a very risky signing. Because if mm. he does shoot the lights out and he does well, great but if he bombs then it's like what have you done um so it is i, th- I think they're taking a massive risk and it's now up to andile jali because the ball is in his court he can still it, can he be the andile jali of old hmm. only he can let us know and the thing is physically he's gonna have to improve because in his current condition i don't think he's, he's at the level where he's gonna really um contribute in the change hmm. while you're on the mic mark uh, vincent pule a shocker for many of this leaves Orlando Pirates we know he's been uh, uh you know injury prone he hasn't been able to do all that we expected from a bule over the years you know he showed promise at some point even you know a Bafana Bafana candidate but he has not done well in terms of earning his place at Orlando Pirate we have not seen him uh, uh in a while now and parting ways with Orlando Pirates uh with them saying really appreciate it he's 32 years old now is uh Vincent Bule what do you make of that? Yeah, it's unfortunate. These are the realities of football. Um, he's steadily fallen down the pecking order at Pirates. Um, and yes, injuries have played a massive role in that, um, that he hasn't been able to play uh, for a consistent period of time. Um, it was always going to be difficult. And so, again, it's about output. Um, you can't play on your reputation. It's literally about what you're contributing on the field. And at the moment, when we look at even last season, did he contribute enough to really earn um, you know, 
a, a stay at the club. Unfortunately, you have to say he didn't. And it's not, it's one of those where you feel for him because he's been very unlucky because of injuries and he hasn't been fit for, an, for long enough to really impact the game. And so it's a sad one, but these are the realities of football. You're not going to just stay on reputation. You have to actually produce on the field. Pro, do you see him picking up a contract elsewhere? Do you see him coming back and perhaps uh, living out the talent that we all saw in Vincent Pule when he signed in 2018-19 for Pirates? We will never uh, see that Vincent Pule that played under Rolani Mokwen at Paris and then under Joseph Vintau. We'll never see that Vincent Pule again. But he can still reinvent himself. I think a team like Super Sports United will really help him uh, a lot in terms of reviving his career. I think he still has got like two or three more years there where he can still show us what he, uh, how good he was. But the thing for me is all about rolling back the years uh, for Vincent Pule and then trying to impress anyone. But uh, there's still a lot of football in his legs. And uh, we wish him all the best. Nadim? Yeah. Oh, you still close my mic. <laughs> Injuries has really actually hampered his career. Yeah. You f- he's one of those players you feel sorry for him because it is based, you know, what he can do. Yeah. And you'll just wish him all the best in mm. getting a new club because at Pirates, they had to release him. Otherwise, he was not contributing that much anymore. There are now a lot of players who are playing ahead of his position and the team has been improving without him. So it's one of those things. It's not surprising to see him going. Well, here's a surprise. Bongani Sam to Chiefs? Uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one uh, when uh, you've got Happy Mashian um, uh, in the fringes as well and uh, you're signing a player that uh, has not played much football. Um, for me, I think Kansas Chiefs is being dealt um, uh, badly by the, the nature of the market. Um, there isn't much quality left. Uh, footed players in the league that can play that position, but uh, I, I thought they were going to look in, in the foreign market and try to get someone that can play left back for them or left wing back. But um, Bomani Sam, I think, is still young. Maybe if he can get a, a coach like Unadi, he, he can improve and uh, he can get, regain his confidence that we saw, uh, I think, at Celtic. And um, well, one can hope for the best as well. Uh, we wish him all the best at Chiefs. He's 26 years old currently, of course, a former Marys Bay United, London Pirates, Bloomfield and Celtic, Highlands Park. Um, last team he played for on loan from Orlando Pirates was, of course, uh, Morocco Swallows there. What do you make of Bongani Sam at Chiefs? Yeah, it's a strange signing looking, but from January, didn't when he, when he left Swallows, no team signed him, and now he's going to join Kaiser Chiefs. Yo, I'm not sure because he was at Pirates, he was never a regular starter there. And they sent him off on a free transfer. Yeah, in a, in a big team. So they always, Pirates will always try to loan him out. They never relied on him. Uh, maybe at Kaiser Chiefs, as a squad player, it's a good addition. But for him he, to be a starter, to be the number one reliable left back, I'm not sure. And it's, uh, you know, Pilani says hopefully he can get back to the form of Celtic. Of Celtic. Jeez, yeah. That was a long time How ago. How long ago was, was that? It and was so, 2018, 2019. It you understand? Like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the reality is. Unfortunately, since he's left Celtic, he hasn't really um, mm. shot the lights out. He hasn't really done much uh, at any club. And he he's had the opportunity at, at Marisbeck. I was going to say, he's been at multiple clubs uh, on loan. And at each and every club, has he really succeeded? How well has he done? Um, even last season at Swallows, I mean, he was decent. W- was he really, you know, the type of player that Chiefs read now? I don't know. So it, it's, it is. And the thing is, it's one of those we know what he's capable of. And hopefully, Kaiser is Chief, he in the mold of a player that Chiefs need? I think he, he can definitely. What he's shown in the past, he definitely has that ability. And so let's hope that this is the right move to really reignite and re spark what was a promising career. Everyone was excited about him, especially when he, you know, from Celtic going to Pirates, we thought, okay, this boy, you know, he shows so much promise. Can we say he failed it all under Pirates? Yeah, certainly. Then it's going to be a success. So no. what is it about Chiefs if they can sign a player that has failed at Orlando Pirates? Is it going to improve Kaiser Chiefs? Because if a guy that Orlando Pirates were always trying to loan him out, then he was there as a left back. They have to move Hoto to as a left back while they know that he's available, he's on loan, he's their player. They never even recalled him. What does it tell you? So I'm not sure. It's a very strange signing. Because, I mean, this is the Chiefs that's, that's that, that, that needs not to be trying things out. You'd assume that under Nabi in this new season, with the pressure the Chiefs are, have been under, falling out of the top eight, even in the DSCB Premiership, this is the Chiefs that's signing tested players. You'd expect, a, a, you know, when the Tepo Masidela signing happened. For me, yeah. it looks like a confusion if you release Klant and you sign Bong and Sam. Are we going to say now, at the moment, Sam is a better left back than Klant? Are we, are we saying that? Are Chiefs saying it's an upgrade of Klant? A guy that has I think he might get the opinion that he is. 
No, it's I possible. Mean, I have to agree with what I'm saying because oh. that's a reality. If well, so between Clanty and so the Sam, thing is, and that's why I agree with Nadim. It's a strange signing. Yeah, it is a strange signing, but we know his ability, and so they're going on what they hope he can do. Because the reality is, since he left Celtic, he hasn't shown that kind of form, and so it is a strange signing. I, I completely agree, and it's it, it it's interesting what Nadim is saying. Um, is Bongani Sam? Right now, better than Tlanti was last season, you know. Pro is that's he? That's debatable. I, uh, but Andy, uh, I, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's a difficult one. But uh, like I said before, he has been. Hey, there, hey, I think you know, Pro, you such Twitter. You are Switzerland. What you. did you say before? <laughs> what? What did you say before? You say like like you said before. What did you say before? Yeah, I, I said before. It has been dealt by the transfer market or the nature of the market. There aren't enough quality left footed defenders or left uh, left backs uh, in the market available at the moment so if you've got a um, a, a bongani sam that is 26 and uh, you look at his package as well i think you can you can live with that and uh, you can compete with two happy machine and, and if they can't get uh, the target that they're looking for so i think the only two left backs in, in, in the country that are quality one is at amazulu and another one is at selen forge so do you pay those millions to get those players or do you settle for a bongani sam you know normally i'd say you're just pushing amazulu but you're not wrong in this instance you're not wrong in this instance. I mean, there is a quality left back out at Amazul. Um, so, yeah, yeah you, you, you get a brownie point for that one. Congratulations for pushing in the right way. <laughs> Guys, let's move on to the big conversation of the week. Sundowns and Rulani Mukwen. Broken by Amazul Amale for the Super Journal. A stellar job. Award-winning journalism, that in what he's been able to do with the Rulani Mukwen story. But firstly, let's go to the conversation we had with Nadim here. When we were unpacking how well Rulani had done this season, Nadim had a different view altogether. Sundowns is very clear. They want to win the Champions League. They've invested heavily, but spending players are lending 50 million and so many quality players. If Rulani does in... Mendieta, yeah, Costa. Yeah, he might actually not be... He might be frustrated so from you now think, or not. you think this could make or break Rulani as a coach at Sundowns? I'll be surprised if I see him next season, if he loses this match. I'll be surprised if I see Rulani next season. I pro enemy number one. Maram I put Let's go to the big story now. Rulani was here um, after having lost the Champions League but winning the league. And he spoke about this Champions League thing because if the Champions League is the big hoodoo that Sundowns are facing, he had a different perspective at it. And we will continue with this dream and we will win the Champions League. But it might not be this season, of course. But eventually we will win the Champions League and we will win it playing the way the club, its supporters, its culture. Because if you want to change the style of football, then you've got to take out quite a lot of what speaks to this club. And then if you change completely your identity, you've got to eradicate a lot of years written about Mamelodi Sundowns. He went on in this conversation to tell me about the fact that Pep Guardiola, how many times has he won the Champions League um, at Man City? Although, having been there and hired for that fact there, you know, he went on to speak about PSG. They had some of the biggest stars in the world. At some point, that Mbappe were playing with Neymar and Messi. How many times did they win the Champions League? Beto being at Sundowns with all that he had as well. How many times did he win the Champions League? Saying it's the most difficult trophy to win and that he'll need time to do so. He's never going to get that time to do so, not at Sundowns at least. We also know that Sundowns released a statement, and in that statement, I think the major point that Sundowns makes there is to say that nobody in the club affected or advised against the firing of Rulani Mukwena. The big story, though, broken by Mazula Malefa, is that they came to heads between Rulani Mukwena and the sporting director, right, in Flemingberg. They were not seeing eye to eye, so much so that in the semi-final uh, Champions League match, Flaming Barak was the one that asked uh, that uh, to, to, uh, 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 Tembazwane not start the match because he's slow, doesn't enjoy or like the way that he plays, prefers a Mabena to a Tembazwane. You guys have heard the story. The story has been told many a times. I'm going to give you all you know, your time now to speak your minds and your thoughts about what you think with the parting of ways and the way that it's happened as well. The way that it's happened as well. You know, the fact that um, he had wanted a striker. He wanted a Mabena. He was given a Tashrik Matthews. He was given uh, um, uh, an Escoval. You know, he didn't get what he wanted. He signed a lot. He signed a Bongani Zungu. He didn't know that they were releasing a Temba Zwane. Those decisions were made. I mean, sorry, a, a Bongani Bongan Zungu. Zungu. 
he those decisions were made outside of Rulana Mukwena's all the information that we're gathering at the moment. So therefore, if you're going to tell the coach who to play and who not to play, if you're going to get players and release players without the coach's knowledge, it means you don't need me. Okay? So that's just a nutshell. But you guys are very well aware of the facts. I'm going to start with you, Pro. I, I don't have a question on this one, but to say sundowns right now. Go for it. We, we, we had this conversation, uh, I think, uh, uh, two weeks ago, but Andy, where we asked who, to, who should sign players as the coach or the club. And uh, when you look at this uh, Sundowns instance, you can see what is taking uh, the sporting director and Rolani, they're both signing players, their own perfect players, and the other one is signing with a vision in mind, with his vision in mind, and the other one is signing with the style of play um, in mind. Because uh, you, you, look, you, you listen to all the stories that have been told, but uh, at the end of the day, I can certainly say I was shocked, but at the same time, you look at the results and you say, okay, out of seven trophies, how many trophies did Sundowns win uh, with all the investment that they've made? And you say they've only won the league title. And I think uh, Rolani's uh, stay at Sundowns was ruined by the own goal that they considered in last season's Champions League. Uh, I think against Esperance, uh, they, were, they, they were a little bit erratic and there was an element of anxiety with semi-final that this year, uh, year 2023-24 season, hence they didn't win that semi-final. But uh, uh, losing the Champions Champions League and also losing the MT in it final against the Orlando Pirates on penalties, losing the next Bank Cup against the Orlando Pirates, um, the spat with the ETS Galaxy. I think all those factors, when they were put into one pot, um, the club had to make a decision of whether they continue with the coach or or or, or they, they they find a new direction. But for me, uh, uh, it was a shocking decision, but at the same time, you understand looking at the investment that has been made. And Coach Rolani himself, I think, uh, when he when he reflects on his Sundowns career, he can safely say that uh, as much as statistics uh, were there in his favor, but trophies were never in his favor. And uh, he, he will improve. He's only 27. I think he will come back stronger. Any team that he coaches going forward, I think, is going to gain a much better and a much stronger Rolani Mokwen. Mark? Yeah, I think uh, I think we were all shocked. Um, and again, kudos to my friend here yeah, <laughs> for, for, for calling it. But yes, um, I think it, it did come as a shock, but I, I don't want to focus too much on what was, but mm. what is. And uh, part of me looks at this and says it, it might be a blessing in disguise um, for Coach Rulani specifically. Because the interesting scenario here for me is that when you look at what's going to come now, I think... Coach Rulani's time uh, at, at Sundowns was always clouded by a lot of things. People saying he's got this, he's got that. It's hard to fail. So he was never really given the credit that he deserved for doing what he's done, um, for nearly going an invincible season or whatever the case may be. Um, because be, come what may, maybe he didn't win the amount of trophies that he needed to, but Sundowns were a very difficult team to beat. He won the AFL. I mean, that was a very difficult tournament to win. Um, and it was always clouded by like... Like people would say, yeah, but he's got this squad. He's got this. It's hard to fail. And I think keeping this, the, 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 a squad like that happy is one of the most difficult things to do, first of all. And so now the coach coming in, because it's, it's going to be wherever he goes next, he's now going to have to show himself. Is he the quality of coach that you know we think he is or that he can be? Um, because wherever he goes now, he's going to really have to show himself. And he's an ambitious coach. And I think this gives him an opportunity to set himself and show himself, show his quality away from the luxury of sundowns. And then whoever comes in is going to be tested immediately. Um, and and then it's going to be like, can you see? It's, when we reflect on it, it's going to be like, so the job isn't as easy as people think it is. And it could go both ways because it could tank Rolani as a coach or it could really e escalate what he's done. And so that's why I say I think it's the right time now even to part ways because now he can really reinvent himself. And finally, Nadim. Yeah, I think it's a decision that has to be done. He had to leave Sundowns because if you look at last season when he took on, he won the league. Before he, he was appointed as a sole coach, Sundowns have already won five successive league titles. It was very easy for them to win the league title. If you look at the number of points and Pito, was we won it and him and Steve Kombela and Mangoba Mngiti when they were trio, they even won a treble. Immediately took over. He didn't. He lost to Stellenbosch, the trophy that was remaining after being eliminated by Pirates. So he won the league. Okay, sure. Even this season, he won the league with 23 points, 26. Or 23, 23 point difference. Yeah, yeah, 20, yeah, 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 23 points, which which is very impressive. Almost went the whole season unbeaten. But what happened in the trophies? He lost to Pirates in the MTN8 on penalties. 
okay, sure, you lose to Pirates again in the NetBank Cup. Uh, Bombela, when Mfokeng, he, again, he made a mistake by playing Zungu. Zungu is not a defender, he's never been a defender. He was trying to tell us that Zungu can now play defender, of which is, he makes a plan that they, people are not criticizing Rulan enough for doing those kind of things, he, telling us that Zungu is going to elevate him as a defender. was never a defender. He was making mistakes. We did say in this show that immediately you play against tough teams, you'll be exposed. And Brighton Mshlong, when he came into the show, he said the same thing again. That Rulan, when he's going to face tough teams in the Champions League or facing Pirates in those kind of matches, he lost that match. Even if, that, I still believe, even, that's why I said in the show, Pirates were going to beat Sundowns. Even if that match went on stretch, I still believe Pirates were going to win. Again, in the ch Champions League, he didn't give you the confidence that he's going to win it. If you look how he played against a younger 0-0. Zero, zero. I mean, there was a time where he, like, you went away 0-0. Zero, zero. You, come, you come at home, you struggle to score. And then against, against experience, you fail to score away. Then at home, you, go, you don't score. Imagine coaching a big team like Sundowns, start at a team, a team that wants to win the Champions League. You can't even score a goal in four successive games, home and away. Again, that was not acceptable. He, does, he gets eliminated at home, of which that one, it was really insulting. He, sh he should have beaten experience. I, it, though I don't blame him that much, I blame Sundown's management for the stretchage of putting that game at night. That game should have been during the day because North African teams historically they struggle to play during the day. I mean, during the day in South Africa. But Rulan again made a mistake. I mean, if you're talking about the guy who got a started team, got three players that were signed with big uh, transfers, even his guy, he fetched Lodge from Pirates, he played him in that game. You couldn't even score a goal in four games in a row. Then again, he has to be eliminated. Then you go to Pirates. You lose the second time to Orlando Pirates. Then imagine this guy is playing Sundowns. People are looking. I know the only thing he did is in the league is impressive. No one, and I mean, all the statistics are favor him. He broke new records. But if you look where it matters, he won. Actually, you can say he won the Berkeley, but he failed the war. The war was win the Champions League, beat Pirates in the way it matters. It's fine. You can lose on penalties, but to lose to Orlando Pirates again. I honestly felt it that, you know, Rulane is actually tried his best and his best at Sundowns was not good enough simply because he failed to win the Champions League that the president of the team, the owners, the board, they want the Champions League. It, it makes them angry. They don't like it to see why that and Ali Ali keeps on winning the Champions League. The fact is Rulane failed to win the Champions League in two times. They are not willing to give him the third time. They don't believe so. And I agree with them. I don't believe even next season Rulani was going to win a Champions League. The way I saw him failing to score against Younger, home and away, against experience, home and away, I'm not convinced. So I will say it's a good decision. But Rulani is still a young coach. He has a lot to learn. Uh, he has proven himself that he can. He has improved from the way he was at Pirates and at Chippa United. From his next job, I think he won't make those mistakes. He will take play the best players in their position. He won't try to check these rotating systems where he plays players out of position and say sometimes there's no system. Every team worldwide, even now we're watching uh, German and uh, Spain, it's a, there is a system. You need to have a system. Rolane mustn't try to overcoach players and come with new systems. When it works, it's good. They will congratulate you just like Pep Guardiola has done it. But when you fail, then they will fire you. Well, those are the views of the guys. We've got five minutes to take some of your calls and voice notes here. We've discussed almost everything. There was just so much. And remember, um, in two weeks' time, the guys are going to be in studio for two consecutive days as we look forward uh, to the PSL season before it begins. Let's go straight to your voice notes and then take some of your calls. Hopefully, we can get two or three in on 086-000-2160. WhatsApp on 060-552-730. Ah, guys, I did not say me now. And uh, I have an opinion on it as well. But I don't, I didn't say uh, one is bigger than the other. Younger is bigger than Orlando. No, no, no. You must listen, guys. You must listen. Uh, you can give that to somebody else on this show, not me. Play the voice note. Hey, ma. That's Boza, man. The case of Chiefs is signing in the players. Oh, go. In this year's year, but sign a player to social media. When are they signing players? Case of Chiefs. Yeah, man, he bong on him for long, you know, so Cape Town. Andy, I think I disagree with one of your analysts. In my view, I think uh, if you look at Sundowns, we, we need a left-footed player who can ship in goals. When you look at Neo Mayema, he has been disappointing in, in terms of scoring goals. And that's why I think next last season, he was not fishing much with Sundowns. If you look at Escovel as well, 
He's not a player that will give you 10, 10 goals. If you look at Aziz, he's a player that can chip in 10 goals for Mamelo Sundowns and above. And I think Sundowns going to club World Cup and Champions League. I think we need such a player to beef up our middle field and attacking attacking uh, um, uh, system. Thanks, Mr. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's go to Olisa. Olisa is out uh, in Johannesburg, wants to speak about the Rulani matter. You've heard the views of the gents here. Um, you know, very different in how they put it. What do you think, Olisa? Uh, Andy, uh, I'm, 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 I'm really sad. And for me, Rulani Mugwena has exceeded my expectation. He's currently the successful coach in the PSL. And if you check how Bafana Bafana has been impressive recently, um, their form has been influenced by how good Mamelu Sundowns is. And in Mamelu Sundowns, that is good, was coached by Rulani Mugwen. Now, here is a story now. In football, I, I used to think it's orientated by results, but at times it doesn't work like that because uh, not so long ago, Unai Naki was the defender of the season team for Mamelu Sundowns. The following season, he was let go. Urlan Mukwena is the current coach of the season, but he was let go. So football sometimes works so strange in a way that you don't know whether you are in or out. But I believe Urlan Mukwena is a very good coach. Uh, he's going to grow. And I was happy when he said he doesn't mind being an assistant coach to my favorite coach, Uens Midendor, because Uens Midendor is, is a very knowledgeable coach. Olisa, well, I appreciate your thoughts. Let's go to Donald. Donald is out in Fort Lawrence. Oh, Donald is gone there. Uh, actually, I'm looking at the time now. Should we take another call? Play, 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 me, play me another voice note. Ah, ma'a. In town, thou shop. No, I am not. Ma'a, he's a chief. He's a chief. Yes, who's signing players there? Come on, Nabis did Nabis say he want Bongani's M. Can we run along with chiefs? No, but Mazola, I think he did confirm yes. that uh, Nabi approved that. I win. Mean, they, they are still continuing to. <laughs> <do it. laughs> no, 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 I saw something. Where... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't it's... see it. Mazola, I know you're listening. Text me. Moses is out in Nature, and I can only imagine what you're going to talk about, Moses. <laughs> now I want to talk about Ronan. Yeah, oh, okay. Go for it. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm... I'm a bit divided, but happy at the same time that Rolani leaves that uh, uh, sundown at, 40, at sorry, 33 points, which is going to be difficult for him to, to reach next season, knowing that uh, Chase is going to come up strong, and so is Pirates. So it's not going to be easy. So he leaves while he's still at the top. Um, so that I'm happy with. But also, for sundowns, I see, no more, I foresee a, a, a downfall of such a major club um, due to what we hear about Fleming. So whoever then is going to come there, geez, he's going to feel the pressure. And I might not even reach 65 points next season. That's my point. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's all subject to medical from Nazardine Nabi approves. So it's all waiting for that. Um, one more voice. Six, Where are the guys? 65 points wins the league, eh? still. Uh, I don't know. I think Sundowns have uh, made it now impossible to, to count as 65, eh? I mean, think about no, it. The says, two teams. He says he doesn't see Sanders reaching 65 points. Oh, yeah, 65. But they still they win the league. 65, they still win the league. Because second and third this season were in 50. Exactly. Second and third. Sundowns were in 73. Two points per game. Uh, the guys are going to be in studio soon. They, where are they? They're not? They're no. in Durban. Oh, okay. We, we, we're busy uh, chatting it up, waiting for them to come into the studio. They're in Durban, of course. That's where the party is this weekend. Uh, Durban, July, gents? No. Oh, okay. No. Pro, are you you no. Durban already? Are you stepping in? I know I'm going to church. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. We've got to get out of here. <laughs>